Welcome to another video and in the well I'll call it my carb bowl um, we have a carb from Honda GCV 135 this one I believe um, and yeah I'm going to clean it this that's what the video is about I'm going to clean the carb for the GCV version of um, Honda engines uh, the 160 and the 190 are all basically the same i don't think there's any different much i think the 190 has got a different jet size but um that's not important to clean it um and i'll go through how i do this so um firstly um i'd advise to get some disposable gloves uh, the tools you need um is a 10 mil socket or a spanner will do um i've got three screwdrivers here i've got um that one, which I usually get the uh, um, main jet out. You can get proper screwdrivers for that, but that one tends to do the job. This one, um, sometimes I use that as well. And this one's a uh, Phillips one, head one, so, or the cross head. So, first thing first, um, I haven't even took this apart or anything. So first thing first, I'm gonna, see it's got some old fuel in it. It actually does smell old as well. So yeah, I've lined the, uh, my bowl tin whatever you want to call it out with some blue roll and i've got some more of that um because i will need some more of that along the way so i'll take that off for a start and did easy enough and it's handy along the way if you um got a compressor as well there we go so yeah there we go that's off let's have a look in the bowl yeah, you can see let me get screwdriver pointed out there is a bit of gunk in there, not too bad at all, but there is a bit of gunk, it's got some, I don't know, rusty gunk stuff. So, yep, that'll need a clean out. Um, one tool I did yes, forget. I forgot um, some needle nose pliers, um, or pin nose pliers as I tend to call them, but like that. So pull that pin out, just come out nice and easy. Uh, and then we have the float there. Got a few bits of rubbish stuck to it, and there's um, the little needle valve. So to put them all in there, I usually clean them all at the end. Um, the gasket is there. Check the gasket round there, which on the Honda ones are generally okay down there because they're sort of uh, pushed right into the body, so they never usually fall out. Um, the Briggs and Stratton ones do more so. Um, I'll try this screwdriver in there. Like I said, there is a you can get a special Briggs and Stratton screwdriver for this, but has that done it? Yep, that's done it. And then what I usually do because my screwdrivers aren't brilliant for it, I go in with a smaller one, but it's undone, so that's the main thing. And what I find, Honda ones, you can unscrew it so far and then it doesn't seem to want to unscrew anymore because there seem to be a split, they seem to make it so there's a split in the, in the threads. So I just get a, a pick, push it through the hole, then just sort of lever it a little bit, like so. And then if I leave it as I unscrew it, which has popped back a bit, I don't know why there isn't a constant thread on it? It seems that I've never actually took one any further apart to look or even looked in there, but I find this every time. So as you can see that, that is nearly out now. I've gotten to the next threads. And then it's sort of, if you tip it that way and loosely do it, we should have it fall out, which we, I've nearly there. <laughs> and you just have to do this, but um, just get that, and then that should get out. So yeah, that's how, that's how I find out how I have to do it. Um, yeah, I can see in it there is a split in the threads. So yeah, um, by using that little pick, just sort of levers it down a little bit as you unscrew it. So I'll check that in a minute. So now we've got to get the. Little tube out. If I 
forget what they're called. Um, I'll put it in the bottom. I always forget what it's called. I just call it the tube, really. It doesn't really matter. I know it's in there and I know it has to be cleaned. So um, that's another time when a pick does come in handy. A bit of a, a pick with a bit of a hook on it. And I just, yep, it's come out there. I can call that. So, yeah, a pick. It's not brilliant, that one, but it's got a bit more of a hook on. So I've got that out. So now it's a matter of um, taking that screw there out like the sort of a, sort of just that um sort of butterfly there so if you want to you can count it where, where was i i'll start there half half that's one half two half three Half, four, half, about four and a half turns in. So now I can um, remove that totally. So you have to drop that in there as well. So all that out after. Then we have that one that has to come out. And it's nice and easy actually. So we take that one out. Because that has got to be cleaned in there as well. Because you might better just catch that. There's a little um, little hole in there as well that has to be cleaned out. So now that is the carb stripped down. So what I usually do now, put everything together. It's actually better. I should have done that. If you've got a yeah, I've got one here. I've got another little bowl. I'm going to put all the little bits in that so they keep it all separate. Then if you need to change the um, the blue roll in the tin you won't accidentally throw anything away so that's all separate I'll clean that at the end so what I usually do some people use um, other stuff they um, aren't keen on carb cleaner they can use WD-40 but um, uh, I, I, I like this carb cleaner stuff but it will expand your rubber gaskets on some carbs on here it'll be all right like I said it's sort of right in there so that's not going to do the damage on there so really you want some safety glasses on which i will put on just because carb spray stings quite a lot when you get it in your eye this stuff's much better than the stuff i was using before it comes out less fierce out of the tin so so that's just a general clean down on the carb so i'll give that a, a, a blow off and then i'll go for all the little all the little chamber bits in the carb the best i possibly can and get this carb looking all nice and clean again so yep i'll let that soak for a few minutes get the compressor built up and then we'll, uh, so now i've got the compressor built up and um yeah i'm just going to blow it down so again wear your glasses just like that i'm going to blow off just off of the bench because um i don't want everything getting covered in the bits of muck to come off it so yeah just blow it down and then yeah that'll clean it off nicely so now the carb is all blown off and clean. So I'm just going to clean for all the little holes now, all the little chambers through it and everything. So I'm going to do that with carb spray. And remember safety glasses again. And you want really to have a straw on it as well on the end of the, the tin. Just makes it so much easier. Um, actually, I'll go through there first. And see, we're coming through where I took that screw out from. So that's nice and clear. You can hear that coming out somewhere. Yep, that's coming out the main tube there. We've got another one there, which is coming out there. I think that might be about here. There is another one there, I think. Yep, I've got that coming out there. So I'm pretty satisfied that the carb is nice and clear. Just, oh, and then there's that one as well. There's the one where your main fuel line goes in. You can hope you see that. So I'll just give that a final little. I don't generally take them out. Um, the fuel, um, the fuel adjuster one, because they're generally set. You can see that one. It doesn't even allow me to unscrew that any further. That one because it's got like a tab on it. Um, 
so yeah i'm gonna leave well alone with that um i never find a need to remove them um unless if i put it back on and it didn't happen to run properly um i might remove that but i'd have to snap that little uh tab off which i don't want to do really so um yeah i don't think there'll probably be any need to do that but if i had if i had ongoing problems with the carb i'd be tempted to do that and then take that out and clean through there but on this video i'm not going to so if you feel you need to you would on this particular one have to break that little bit of aluminium off to unscrew it but yeah that's just how honda do it from new just that fine fine setting so yeah i'm gonna just blow that down again now and then we'll go on to the little the little bits in the in the tub clean them up and then we can put everything back in and then we, we should be done and have a nice clean carb um so what i've done now is yes blown it all through all the little holes where i showed you i went through with the carb cleaner and i've just blown it all out with the airline just in case there was anything um stuck in there um and yeah that should be good now so i will put that to the side now and then i'll get all the small bits back in and then we'll clean them up and then we can reinstall everything back in the carb and be and be done so for a start i'm going to start with the bowl easy enough to do just a bit of carb spray in there i think probably on this one i'm going to have to just slightly pick away at that mark down the bottom a little bit because it has sort of gone into the metal a bit just if they're a bit rusty you know it's okay as long as you do clean it up as best as you possibly can so yeah i'm pretty happy with that um give it a little bit of spray on the outside and then that will have an airline off. I will finish off with just wiping that over with some blue roll, but um, I don't have to do that. So now moment. we've got the float here, just a gentle spray off with that. It's plastic, so nothing's gonna really um, embed in it. Like um, it's not gonna rust in it or anything. So just give that a good clean off. So, yep, I'm happy with that. It'll all just have a slight blow off at the end just to clean everything totally up and just make sure nothing's um, got on it. That is sort of okay, the main bolt. I'll just actually give that a blow off. I don't think there's any need to carve through the spring. We have the um, adjuster screw. Well, the tick over, um, like, like butterfly type screw. And there's a little little needle valve i usually with these just get a little bit of um blow them off and then just get a little bit of paper towel and then just on the little rubber bit if they're not rubber they're like sometimes steel on the end but just sort of just clean the end or just in case there's a bit of crud on there or anything i think that was fine the pin we have here if i can pick it up just do the same with that just give that a little clean off we have that there and then all we're left with is that screw it goes in that little hole underneath that um, butterfly adjuster so i'll just wipe that off and then we have the tube and we have the the main jet so i'll just get uh tools out what i do to sort them out and then we'll we'll be done with cleaning the small parts up yeah so there's the main jet what i do here i usually just hold it with them and then last through you can see got a nice stream coming through there then i get i've just bought these quite recently some like micro drill bits and that is just about the right size so i just go through with that and just just go through just in case use it a little bit like a small little round file really just to check because i have had them that you keep blowing them out with the carb cleaner and the hole still isn't that big as big as it should be so yeah i'll just go through that and i'm quite satisfied that's okay um and just in case it did move any um material or debris just clean that it would only be uh, i'd never actually drilled it so it'd only be um a bit of sort of crud if there was anything in there so yeah that's done now and then we have uh, actually i'll see if i can show you that clear 
Um, there you go. You can see how clear that is. I've got that little torch behind it. See that? So that's nice and clear. So that's done. That can go to the side. I'll get the tube as well. It's something that I don't always do it, but if you actually hold it with these, carb spray can make your hands very cold. And as it's cold weather at the moment, it's making my hands cold. So um, just hold it like that and blast through like so. You can see it's coming out of the holes at the side and the end. But I will just get the airline. And now you've got to look through them holes at the side and see if you can see daylight through them. Um, I'm going to just do that now off camera. Clear, clear. There's like three you look through, then there's four as you turn it around. Three, then it's back to four. And if you have got any issues there, you can just use one of these micro drill bits again and just push it through to. They were quite cheap. I think they were only about six, seven pounds for this set of micro drill bits. So yeah, they were nice and cheap. So what I'm going to do now is just, um, just get the pliers again, just like before, because I've actually uh, pushed out through it, just in case it did release any crud or anything. I'll just um, clean that down again. It's best to do a thorough job. Some might say I mess around too long with it, but um, I don't agree. I think it's best to really make sure you have it clean. So now I'm satisfied everything's really clean on that, um, on the carb, the actual carb and all, this, all the bits that go in it. So I'm just going to have a clean up and then I'll be back with you and then we'll reinstall So now everything's again. clean. I've cleaned everything off, dried it off and I can carry on with no gloves now because everything, yeah, is nice and clean and um, no petrol or anything. So... Um, first thing I'm going to do is put that screw back in into there. Get the screwdriver to do that. Goes in there like so. That just goes tight. You just screw that. Tight. So now we're going to put the adjuster screw and um, spring back in. That's a butterfly adjuster. Get that started. And it, if I remember rightly, it was all the way in and then four and a half, um, undo four and a half turns. So get that all the way in there. I've used just a flat end one this time instead of the cross um, because it's easier to count with this because there's only two sides on it. See what I mean? So we're all the way in. So that's half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half. So that should be about right. So now we've done all that part. So it's um, the actual. Um, so now, yeah, now. Um, we'll put that tube back in first goes that way so that bit is at the top well the bottom in this case but it goes in that way so that thinner or a thinner bit there be about the hole in goes in there first yep that's film in there then we put that in the little um the main jet so drop that in Yep, that's tight. So now it's the float and the needle valve. We've got the float there, needle valve there. Just hang that in there like so. Make sure it doesn't fall out as you're trying to bring the carb. And then I usually just bring the carb to the float and the needle valve, slot it in the hole like so. It's located in there. And then the pin through there, make sure it goes, make sure you've got the float, the hole on the float in line. And then we're all done, you can see. 
going to be lifting that up now. So that's all good. Uh, now I look at that. Right, so that is where the fuel line's coming in. So I put that. I usually put that this side to the sort of drain bung. Uh, you could take that and give that a clean, but I never bother because if you're cleaning it from the inside, it's not really going to be dirty because you're going to be cleaning it from in there. So yeah, I usually leave that in. Um, so I usually put that, as you can see, that, I don't know if it makes any difference at all, but as that's up higher in there, I don't put it on the side where the float hangs down. You see what I mean? Like there, don't put it that side. I put it the opposite side so it can't stop the float going to its lowest position. Not sure whether it'd affect it or not, but I'm not even going to risk it because there's no point. I could just do it like that. And also that gives that drain bung the side out. It's pointing outwards underneath the uh, air filter casing. Um, possibly could put it on the front. I'm not sure. I'm just not. This is just how I do it because I personally never use them. I never dra I never drain anything out of there. I just take the bowl off and do a job if I'm the whole job if I'm going to do them. So um, check your fibre washer is OK on um bottom bolt and that is so then let's tighten that up we're nearly there now and then what I usually do is me a little shake and you can hear you can hear that the floats moving up and down okay it's not stuck um and there we have it we have one um honda gcv carb all clean and ready to put back on the machine so yeah that's how i do it manually um i i don't use an ultrasonic cleaner every time and um, if it did play up and it happened to be a problem um i would take it apart again and put it through the ultras sonic cleaner to give it a more deeper clean but this one wasn't particularly dirty i don't think it required that so the carbs around the air i think will be fine and yeah um then the th if you do this and then you do the ultrasonic cleaning and it still doesn't fix it it's more than likely there's something wrong inside the carb and it's just um going to be the case of getting a new carb but um most of the time you can clean them and they'll be and they'll, and they'll be fine so yeah so I'm going to leave the video there. I hope this has been of some help. And I'll be along with another video again soon. So thanks for watching.